Claire, Claire, Claire. What? You look awesome. Oh dear. vessel um, before we uh, arrive in Lerwick. We're going to go back inside because we're getting rained on and I think we're almost about to set sail too. We are. Fingers crossed for dry weather when we get to Lerwick. Yes. So we've made it to Shetland. <laughs> 12 and a half hours later and a few hundred miles on a ferry. And uh, yeah, we're here. It's, uh, as you can see, it's a beautiful day. Um, and the crossing was nice actually, fairly smooth. Yeah. Um, we slept okay, didn't we? Yeah, it's a different sensation to a van that doesn't move when you're in a bed that <laughs> feels like it's going up and down over a roller coaster a little bit. Yeah, there were there were a few choppy bits in the night, and uh, it was uh, it was fun. It was fun, but uh, but yeah. So we we're here in Lerwick at the moment, which is uh, Shetland's capital, which is where the ferry comes into. But we're staying in a place called Braywick, which is just uh, further north on the main island. Um, so we're going to grab some essentials here. We've already had some very tasty We've breakfast. We've had some very tasty breakfast actually, yeah, lovely breakfast. Um, and uh, yeah, we're going to grab some essentials and head to the campsite.
something rather unknown about the Shetland Islands. The Shetland bus was a military operation that took place in World War II between 1940 and 1945. Um, as you'll have seen from the footage from the Scalloway Museum, it was uh, a mission to uh, fight back against the Nazis in Norway. So in 1940, Germany invaded, with little warning, invaded Norway um, and essentially pushed a lot of Norwegians out. They jumped on boats and headed across the sea and the first place they came to was here, the Shetland. Um, and about 3,000 Norwegians landed on Shetland and ended up in a big refugee camp just outside Lerwick. The British government and the Norwegian government at the time decided to fight back against the Germans and used fishing boats that had come over and fishing boats from here in Shetland to send uh, military personnel to Norway, um, kind of secret agents to, to infiltrate the German front and then use those boats to also evacuate uh, Norwegian refugees back here to Shetland and it was called the Shetland Bus. One of the most famous bits of history here in Shetland but relatively unknown outside of these islands. We, we thought it was fascinating um, and just something, a, a really great story we, we really wanted to share. We've made it to the most northerly point on our first six-month road trip of the UK. 
We're currently stood on Skor Beach on the Isle of Unst. Yeah, and this, correct me if I'm wrong, this is as far north as you can get in a in a motor vehicle. Yeah, the road ran out, so... <laughs> This, this is, is it. This is this is as far north as you can get. And right now we are closer to Norway than we are to back to mainland Scotland, which is uh, which is quite something. Which is yeah. quite something. So when you said, obviously we got a 12-hour ferry to the Shetlands. Yeah, 12-hour ferry to the Shetlands to the mainland where we were staying, and then we've had to get two more ferries to get to here, and it's taken us at least two and a half, three hours just to get to here. Uh, but this is a milestone. This is the most northerly point. Um, and look, it's beautiful. Yep. It's absolutely beautiful. And we're the only ones here. And we're the only ones here. Um, we also visited, while we were here on Unst, we visited the uh, Saxevoort Distillery, uh, which you will have seen in, on the video just before, um, where Shetland Real Gin is produced. It's actually on an old RAF radar station. The radar still exists here um, on Unst, but the, the station is, is uh, not used anymore. It's, uh, it's now just the, the gin distillery. Um, so yeah, it's all south from here um, and we're going actually we're going as far south as Land's End aren't we? We are before Christmas. <laughs> so onwards and southwards roadside just on our way back up the Isle of Onst and we found this amazing recreation of a, a an early Viking longhouse and just behind it an actual sort of Viking I guess longship rowing boat type thing <laughs> I'm great with history me um, let's go and have a quick look Bobby's bus shelter. It's so called because this bus shelter was removed by the council in the mid 90s and a six year old boy, Bobby McCauley, wrote a letter to the local newspaper saying he was outraged. He used to, him and his friends used to shelter in this bus stop waiting for the school bus. Um, and as you can imagine on the northerly Isle of Unst, it's a bit unforgiving. So. A new bus stop was put in its place and it was then decorated and it has been redecorated every year with a different theme. This year's theme is fake gnus. Um, sort of focusing on the social media of today and for example there's an article in here that's drop bears target tourists and uh, yeah I mean I'll, I'll I'll let you make your mind up, but if, if Sam just comes down here, just to show you what the height of a drop bear is in comparison to a human. Terrifying. So I presume that is fake gnus. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so this is the guest book that is left in Bobby's bus shelter. And if you just click, flick, uh, flicking through, Claire, I mean, look at this. This has got to be, what, the world's most famous bus shelter? I mean, I'm skipping great big wads here. <laughs> amazing, amazing. Mm -hmm. 
So we've just packed everything away and we're getting ready to leave the rather uh, lovely Braywick Cafe and Caravan Park. We're really going to miss that view from our um, front window. It's been, it's been gorgeous, hasn't it? Um, today we're heading south to the Jarlshof Prehistoric and Norse Settlement, down right down on the south of the island. Mm-hmm. Um, and then later on back into... Lowick to catch the ferry to Orkney tonight. Yeah, yeah, on to uh, onto our next island, and then after that, back into Scotland. Back on the mainland. Back on the mainland, but the first three days in Orkney. Yeah. So yeah, we're going to go and uh, go and see what the what the lights Orkney's got to offer. Shetland's been fantastic in every way, and we're hoping Orkney's going to be just as brilliant. which is actually one of the best preserved archaeological sites in Europe. There's evidence here um, of the early settlers on Shetland um, going right back as far as the Neolithic, Neolithic, times. Neolithic period, um, the Iron Age, um, medieval, medieval um, and then sort of uh, the building we're in now, it was uh, the 1500s. Yes. So it shows really interestingly how generations have lived um, in Shetland, um, on the same site, you know, uh, as you said earlier, people would find an area. You know, this this is in quite a sheltered bay, although it's not quite so sheltered today. <laughs> but usually, it's in a quite a, quite a nice, uh, windless, sheltered bay. Um, and when people live there, uh, others often, you know, others would say, "Well, this is this seems like a a good place to live." So generation after generation would build houses in the same place or even on top of each other. So uh, in the 1890s, when this area was hit by a big storm, um, this house here was in place, but then a lot of the um, other um, kind of ruins were exposed um, and people just didn't know they were there. So it shows that there has been people living on this site here uh, and on Shetland since the Neolithic period. Mm-hmm. 